YouTubers. Right, working on my new camera, my new cheap camera. Uh, it's made by Siri. It's, it's, it's got, I think the picture's doing okay. The sound apparently is a bit muffled, or I mean, there's, no, there's, there's no adjustment to it, so I can't do much about that. Uh, except move the camera further away from my, my mouth. Right, okay, so what to do? Well, we'll let's just do something, make it up as we go along. Um, I'll wet the paper all over. This is Fabriano, 130 pounds. For any clips. We're vibrating this just so we can just tighten up a little bit. <coughs> Hope you've had a good good weekend. Run down to, to Christmas. Now this, this paper is, is very good for wet and wet. I wouldn't I don't use it for anything other than wet and wet. And it's on the back of one I did last uh, last uh, Saturday, Saturday morning. I don't, the, 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 most of them are okay for dem demonstrations, but as finished uh, f potential framers, um, I don't, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sentimental about them. If, if, if I think they're reasonable, then I'll keep them. Um, right, okay, so let's uh, get the palette out of the stay wet one. Okay, so a bit of bit of sienna, bit of raw sienna. I just just put that in. It unifies the painting. I knew a an artist who used to demonstrate for Castle to the Wellington Art Group that I was a member of for many years. Keith Birkinshaw. He would do his paintings. He 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 had a very unusual way of working. He would use a small brush and uh, he would, well, say small brush, let's just, for example, say that. He would dot in his outline, his drawing, with palette grey, really, just a weak palette grey, and he'd paint onto the, wet, onto the dry surface. And then when he did his painting, the, the dots all disappeared into the, into the painting itself. But he'd then dry it, completely dry it, and he'd mix up a, a wash of raw sienna and go over the whole painting quickly without disturbing the paint underneath and let that dry and it gave this wonderful warm glow I'm not going to do it on this one but uh, it's, it was never my technique, it's what he did but it was very effective in his paintings and it was a, it was a nice man right, let's put a bit of blue in Be a blue at the top here. This ultramarine. No, I like to put a bit of water in so that's I'm not going to sense of the light, I'm just going to just just paint. Now let's put a bit of bit of bit of alizarin and a bit of cajello. Dirty cajello. Uh -huh. Clean that off. Clean the brush. Cajolo. Bit of a bit of bit of a listen. And a lovely sky this morning. About seven o'clock. Right, a good cloud. So I'm just missing a bit of ultramarine, a bit of bit of light red. Let's get these clouds going all the way across, across the sky in the water. I never know quite how these are going to turn out. Right, okay now with this new function on this camera, you can actually pause and record provided I press the, the photo shoot button to but I'm going to try so sorry about the camera shake. Right, I've given that a bit of a dry and pulled it tight. Right, just a bit there. So the 
paper is quite flat now. I'm going to put a bit of a background in with those sky colours. Uh, a bit of blue, a bit of, a bit of red. Uh, let's just No worries, but we're just putting a bit of, bit of raw sienna, a bit of burnt sienna as well, why not? Just gently graduate that, there we go. Let's see how that's going to turn out. Alright, uh, let's have some green, a bit of blue and a bit of, a bit of yellow. Trust me. Right, that's quite subtle. Let's put in some darker bits. So burnt sienna and a bit of ultramarine. And this is uh, quite a simple, a simple one. I, I, I like putting sort of marshy stuff in in the foreground. While that's flowing off, I can do that. So I'm going to use a bit of black. Bit of black and a bit of a bit of yellow. Quite a lot of yellow. Black is uh, a very good shortcut. If you want to use Payne's grey, that's what I've, I've been using for years. You can put some water in there. You can by mixing the a bit of ultramarine, a bit of uh, alizarin, and the black, and you'll get more or less Payne's grey. All right, let's just go. If we're going into the distance of this salt marsh, slightly cooler colours. Use a bit of a bit of harder shadow for the, the black and burnt sienna. A bit of shadow in the uh, the murk there. So this is it's sort of a low tide. No, a bit of detail when that's dry. Okay, now we'll uh, assume that that is uh, the marsh coming across here. Just touching with the hake, it's faster. And I can put some, like a bush here or something. A bit of, a bit of that. To indicate the land on the left, rather. Just using a bit of yellow, the black, and, and the burnt sienna. A 
Uh, I've, got, I've got to add some detail to this, but suggestion rather than exact, like bits of uh, boat moorings. All right, now I'm going to just touch some detail into this background. It's a little bit, bit wet, so. Let's get some burnt sienna, a bit of sort of a early morning feel to this one. So we can put in some silhouetted trees. Just at the corner of the hake. Nothing like overdoing it, is it? I'll give that a bit of a block on that side. Stop it falling out of the picture. Early morning on the lake, yes. Sort of make it look as if it's a bit of a bit of an island in there. Okay, now uh, I'm going to dry that off, so bear with me then while I practice my pause. Right, I won't speak too soon, but this might be the first one I've actually used the uh, pause button successfully. It took me four days to find out where it was, <coughs> due to the, uh, the Chinese translation into English. My Canon camcorders got about 100 pages of explanation. The uh, this Siri one has got about 10 pages of actually translated. So I kept pressing the uh, the menu button for a while. But I finally tweet. Oh uh, right, okay. So I'm just going to put in a bit of detail on on those those hills there. Just a bit of bit of greeny blue. Not a lot, just well, oh, just around here and there. Just some trees. It's all very delicate. Not it's going to be covered up, so I mustn't be too much. So, well, I just uh, slightly warm my colours now. It's coming across in here, just varying, catching a bit of sun. Okay, that too. Right, now we'll uh, put in some tree here and there. Uh, bit of blue and a bit of sienna. I want to solidify some of this. Bit of black. 
to, to the sense of actual land here. And I can just... So you can change your mind all the time when you do it. You, the, the painting develops as you go along. Okay, let's get some red in there and some blue. So when I scrape out, it will show. Card, just a bit of plastic. No, I'm just just scrape away some some rocks. You, you don't have to do too many of these. It, the danger is, I know some of you are overdoing this. You do one and you think, well, that looks good, I'll do some more. But it's, it's a suggestion rather than painting everything with the, with the card. Do one or two, and it, or half a dozen. And it stands, it's a shorthand way of saying, ah, oh, this is a rocky shore. Um, I, I, I read somewhere about the great Vermeer. And he, I think there's only 38 nine paintings of his, or something like that anyway, plenty of fakes. <coughs> but, um, he, he would put every brick in on his, his Delft uh, landscapes with the, with the buildings, cityscapes, beautiful. But I think even he got fed up with uh, painting everything exact, so he, he would stucco the house and do a few bricks where the stucco has fallen off. And so, but if you want to put all your rocks in, that's entirely up to you, your painting. But I've, I like overdoing it as well. It's just, oops, that's a bit. Right, now a bit of, I, I can justify putting a bit of a tree in there now. So let's have a bit of, bit of black. It's, because we're painting into the light, it's... Uh, We're going to be silhouetted with this. Put some coming in. It's a beautiful day in London, very cold, well, frosty. But a uh, beautiful sunny day. Glorious day. Now off on a bike ride in the morning with the lads and on the River Wandle. I hope I don't fall off. We were skidding through puddles, ice puddles last week in Morden Hall and my mate fell off and you know, trying to avoid him I fell off. I hurt my wrist again. Okay. Let's just double some. Some autumn, just a few autumn leaves. A bit of black on there. Yeah, I'm really just demonstrating the use of black. It's a uh, it's a wonderful colour. The Queen of Colours from the Monet, or something like Monet. Some of the shadow there. Oh, that hay, if you're using a hay cut, if you're not, I would highly recommend it. It's very Cheap. And once you get used to them, they do so much. They don't last forever, though. But they're for seven or eight pounds, or ten dollars or so. You've got a, a wonderful, wonderful brush. This one's wearing out. It's lost loads of hair. Bit like its owner. Okay, that'll do that. Right now, let's clean the brush and put in some, some, some. Try to do this all with one brush, so probably better if I just that. Yeah. 
just a hit, just go through everything, just just indicate, suggest, just put a bit too big there, do not one like that. that brush for everything so I'll use a half inch flat and I'll put in a, a boat and I didn't put in a man uh, let's have a blue boat with nylon brush you do need to have a bit of a bit of water Just put it dark under there. He's not very good, is he, but... But hey... Let's just get his knee up there a little bit. Okay. A couple of birds, and we're done. Put it in the mouth and... Have a look. Right, okay, Placid Lake, or Placid uh, Estuary, just a, a water sea, a water, water, waterscape, something like that, right, let's put that on there, okay, we're still work, working right here, the recording light is flashing, let's put a, can put a blue one on there, oh, there we are, another, simple lake scene for you to work at. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, right, thanks, thanks for those still. We're just 
I just threw them out. I don't. They wouldn't. There we are. 